Let's take a look at the truck assist starting grid. And as Davo said, starting a little further up the field in this one for him, Matty White in six for Will Davison. Yes, but Anton Di Pasquale is having a ripper night. He starts from pole position here. They qualified for this one earlier, so Anton now has four pole positions across the course of this E-Series. Wilbur will have Max Verstappen next to him. So there's positions five and six. Cam Waters with the Ned Racing Mustang of Andre Heimgartner next door. Scotty Pye from position nine with Jake Kostecki out of 10. There's Fabian Coulthard with Gary Jacobson. Gary would have got sick of the side of the Shell V-Power car in the earlier race, but it was actually Scotty McLaughlin who just kept pestering him. Jack LeBrock. And then Lee Holdsworth and Mark Winterbottom positions 15 and 16. So this one is 11 laps, about 20 minutes. 75 points goes to the winner. Remember, we are also keeping score now of the overall round winner in the BP Supercars All-Stars E-Series because the overall round winner will have $1,000 sent to them courtesy of Armour All, and that will go to the driver's designated charity at the moment. Anton Di Pasquale leads by five points overall. Last race of the evening, and Anton Di Pasquale gets away beautifully off the line. Cold tyres to be respected here. On the outside of him, and in fact now tucking in and crossing to the inside on the dirty line is Van Gisbergen. He's got the move done down the inside, and Shane Van Gisbergen neatly goes through. Verstappen tries to capitalise, and Anton got all crossed up. Did he survive? No, he did not survive. Oh, oh. Carnage, LeBrock's involved. A couple of the Penrite cars looked as though they were tangling here as well. Big one for Jack LeBrock. Oh. <laughs> Just managed to hold a great start. Max Verstappen's moved up into second position. He started from position number five, but there was carnage all over the place there. So good half dozen or more cars have been compromised on the opening lap of the longer of the two races here at Catalonia. A lot of locking brakes into these slow speed second gear corners and there's a lot of damage in the background and Chris Pither had a massive tank slapper coming out of that corner as well. There's big damage I think on Mark Winterbottom's car and I think it's front and rear with that vehicle. So at the moment the order is Van Gisbergen with a one second margin over Verstappen and then Scott McLaughlin showing in third place out of all the madness that was the first three or four corners. Our pole sitter Anton Di Pasquale down in 19th position. Big, big trouble. That was a nice move by Van Gisbergen down the inside into turn one. He started to think about ranging up on the outside and then he tucked in behind. I thought he was going to follow and then he went extremely to the right hand side down the dirty side of the road on a cold tyre. That was a brave move and he was able to do, rehearse it and get it done, no doubt. So, car number 33 on screen. Let's have a look at the BP ultimate clean up here. So, watching Van Gisbergen, he's cleanly through and out the other side, but picking up across the top of that turn one curb, and unfortunately for Deeper Squale, I think he took too much curb and then gets heavily clouded by Mostert, who gets completely T-boned by Todd Hazelwood, who manages to miraculously pop out the other side. So it was Jack LeBrock bouncing off the left-hand side wall back into Will Brown. So both, you're right, both the Penrite racers copped it down there at that first turn. <laughs> I'm, uh, I almost don't want to call him because at the moment nah, he's still trying to, uh, to unravel this ridiculous knot from the first couple of corners but luck uh, with this why not just hand the ball straight to Craig Baird and make it his problem. Beardo. It's always nice with the ball still bouncing but it, um, <laughs> look he's, he's clearly Anton's clearly spun by himself so uh, from that point then everyone as we say there's no consequences so everyone tries to gain 10 positions and then there's a complete cluster behind it but uh, <laughs> no, no foul on Verstappen and Anton so the rest of it's just a roll on effect so uh, play on guys let's get some warm tyres and tidy it up. <laughs> Thanks Craig. Our driving standards advisor in the bunker Craig Baird chatting to us from Queensland. So Van Gisbergen's got a margin of 1.2 seconds it's like wash rinse, repeat. Ground so okay. it looks exactly like it looked in the previous race, didn't it? So Max Verstappen doing an awesome job in second spot and McLaughlin in third. So pitting early is Will Davison. Remember, there's compulsory stop in this race. It is longer. I think it's got a bit of damage on that car as well. Let's uh, check in with our Pertec pit reporters virtually in Melbourne. <laughs> Chad, Jono, what do you got? 
Uh, thanks, boys. Yeah, just keeping an eye on the early pit stops. Remember, there is, first of all, the little issue about making sure you don't speed in pit lane because unlike supercars in the Virgin Australia Supercars Championship, there are differing pit lane limiters. Yeah, certainly 80 kilometres an hour here at the Circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia. And you're not going to see as early pit stops compared to the Silverstone race as much. So do you see these drivers coming in now, but they've got a long way home to make this rubber work. But for this race, we're expecting them to come in, most of the front runners, around laps four to seven. Now, we have had some early pit stops. Anton Di Pasquale pitted lap one because he had that moment on lap one and he's also reporting that something still feels broken in the rear of the car no doubt not surprised <laughs> at all <laughs> not surprised so rick kelly comes out he's got jamie wincup right on his tail here oh, oh. <laughs> that was ridiculous so that was a full-blown <laughs> two-wheel moment that extended for about 50 or 60 meters and uh i can't remember exactly who it was but i think it might have been todd hazelwood did a ghost virtual straight through the middle of anton di pasquale so i reckon it would feel a bit weird as well because another car inserted in the middle of it i'm gartner against Coulthard. they're battling for position here they're battling for position number five this time andre has to go wide he got spun around he managed to hold on to it that's well done actually quite a difficult thing to do when the car's that crossed up so you know clears the throttle big opposite lock steers into the slide tries to figure out how to deal with it and in fact Andre's had enough he's coming in now to also take his compulsory stop so those drivers that take that stop will ask a lot of the tires through the balance of this race but it will give them fresh air let's tune in now with Scott McLaughlin and listen to the way in which his race is unfolding from third position Okay, mate. Do what you can here. Use it up. Richard Harris, his engineer. So he's two. Got guys in the mid pack hitting now. 2.2 seconds behind Verstappen. They are allowed pit spotters, so he's going to react to this pit stop. Gap to Gears is only 1.6 seconds. Now, he might look for the benefit of the undercut if he feels brave enough. They'll have rehearsed this. If he feels brave enough to be able to run the tyres this long. That's the view of Max Verstappen's car in the foreground. That's a cool shot. Top three. Now, he might also be starting to get the benefit of the draft here as well, which comes into effect between half to three quarters of a second. What an amazing E-Series start in both IndyCar and in Supercar from Glockman. Get this lap, mate. Get this lap. So he is coming in. Copy. Four tyres, no fuel. Two wins in the first round. And the transit is, is 15 too. and a half seconds through the lane, plus the tyres. Now, Max is reacting as well. So, uh, looking for eight seconds. An hour. Pit lane speed limiter engaged, 80 kilometres an hour. Right, Gears has gone around again, so we're going to get an undercut on him here. We need a really good outlet. Yeah. How's the big deep breath that he took, Crumpo? Well, there's on your marks. a huge amount of mental concentration involved. That does my head in when I see that shot. behind him, but we'll see. So they're thinking that he will get the undercut, he will come out ahead, but oh, Max, Max Verstappen got the jump on him. Got the jump on him in pit lane. All good, mate. Couple cars coming down. Safety car Should now. be clear. Wheel behind. Oh. Cold tyres. Hey. Right. Okay, so Van Gisbergen's not pitted, and they're looking for an undercut benefit here, but they have been jumped in car number 17, Shell V Power Racing. Cam Waters has gone up into second spot. Fabian Coulthard into third. The first car in the queue that has stopped is in fact Max Verstappen, who you saw in the foreground and passed McLaughlin in the pit stop. So Shane Van Gisbergen now 5.8 seconds clear of Camp Waters. As you mentioned, the top four yet to pit. So the effective race leader at the moment would be Max Verstappen, but it's all about how much Van, Gis Van Gisbergen can get this gap to widen. How long can he run these tyres. Five laps so far around this 4.7 kilometre circuit. I kind of like the idea of running a bit deeper into this one if you can get away with it and one of the things that Shane's very good at with the game is driving the car straight, shortening up the next sequence 
on the incoming set of tyres will probably work to his advantage. Just has to be mindful of the undercut for Verstappen and McLaughlin tucked in behind him. So it's a transit time of 23 and a half seconds, including the eight seconds Tops. for tyres. So at the moment, Shane Van Gisbergen has a 27.9 second lead over Max Verstappen. Waters rejoins cleanly, as does Fabian Coulthard. He's got an amazing bit of equipment that he's driving in this BP Supercars All-Stars E-Series. And remember, once again, as they go back out there, they've gone from one stable car configuration to a very unstable one on a very cold tyre. No tyre warmers involved in supercar racing as there is in Formula One. Engineers do have the tyres out in the sun in reality to try and get as much radiant heat into them as they can, but they are difficult to drive when they are cold. And Gisbergen over Alex Davison for local legends and he's in second position and the first car that has stopped is in third position at the moment and that's Max Verstappen. There is a compulsory stop. This is just down at turn seven and eight, tucked in behind the pit lane at this location. I was actually there for Formula One testing a few years ago in January. It was freezing cold. Barcelona. And everybody sold me the notion of Spain, warmth, seafood, fantastic, get in the sun. To get out, get out and about. No. Visit the shops. A couple of things were a bit frightening there. But... All right, Van Gisbergen has come in. So our race leader has come in. He will take 23 and a half seconds if everything goes right. He had a 27 second lead. So he should still come out just ahead of Max Verstappen. Alex Davison is still out there yet to pit. This is your race leader. Waiting, waiting. Now we're on board with Verstappen coming up this long, long front straight, a kilometre worth of it here at Barcelona. Van Gisbergen rejoins the circuit. He's going to have Max right on him. Go and Max it. is going to go straight past him. He snipped him nicely, didn't he? So he does actually get the benefit of the undercut. But what Shane's going to have as an advantage here is a fresher tyre for the back end of this race. It's going to play out really interesting. This will be fun. Verstappen's done an unbelievably good job, which shouldn't come as any great surprise when you look at the pedigree and you look at the history and the things that he's done. But it's still not an easy thing to E-Series race and then not only do that, but do it in a car that's completely foreign to the type of race car that you typically drive. Yeah, this will be fun. This will be worth watching as Van Gisbergen with fresher tyres, mountain of pace, a lot of confidence tonight after that first round that just didn't go his way at a sixth, the seventh, the 24th in the first round. Here he's had a third, a fourth, fourth and a first tonight. So all the cars have now done their compulsory stop. Max Verstappen is our leader. They've got the benefit of the undercut, but on a fresher Dunlop virtual tyre, Shane Van Gisbergen is in second place, and that's him that you can see in second position. And just behind, in this group of cars in the top three, two seconds, is Scott McLaughlin for Shell V Power Racing. So the heavyweights are at the top of the field, followed by Cam Waters and Will Davison, Jake Kostecki, Gary Jacobson, Fabian Coulthard, Andre Heimgartner, Zane Goddard. That is your top ten. And they will now cleanly run through to the end of lap number 11. And there is our race leader. Now, this is a location where he won his first ever Formula One Grand Prix. Super quick in pre-season uh, pre testing at the beginning of the Formula One Championship year. It's yet to fully unfold. And a location where he's got three podiums to his credit. It's interesting, he's got a very different approach into turn one to the other drivers there, Matty, as well. He actually steps the car fully to the left to open up the radius of the approach into turn one. And he would have done tens of thousands of kilometres at this location, both testing and racing, in the last five years of his Formula One career. I'll tell you what, he must have put the hammer down in those last couple of laps just before Van Gisbergen pitted because... The numbers should have added up for Van Gisbergen to come out a couple of seconds ahead of him. Van Gisbergen pits, Max Verstappen comes up the front straight and gets the jump on him. Now Gizzy's closing the margin, which I expected him to do with that tyre, but he'll only get that benefit for a couple of laps and then the tyre behaviour will plateau. But it is still subject to the way in which you drive the car. So just as it would be in reality, throttle treatment, the way you lean on the car, 
the amount of scrub that you've got in the steering, just how much you demand of the behaviour of the tyre is programmed into iRacing and it becomes a lap time factor. Van Gisbergen clearly very good at it, but he's up against a guy who's also no slouch when it comes to understanding how to get the most out of it. Now McLaughlin's still got the watching brief on. Look now as Van Gisbergen starts to threaten. Now remember that they've been teasing each other about their own individual capabilities and driving standards. So will there be a bit of panel exchange here? Will it be done cleanly? Will it even be done? Can Van Gisbergen get by? He has a big, brave run and steps a little bit wide off the kerb out of the final corner. This is the run to one. He gets the benefit of the draft and Van Gisbergen, the Kiwi, makes a lunge down the inside and that puts him into the lead. Well done, Van Gisbergen. 280 kilometres on approach right down the end of that long, long front straight. Shane Van Gisbergen, fresher tyres. He took aim at Max Verstappen and got that position. He's going for back-to-back -back victories in round two here of the BP Supercars All-Star Z Series. And he's now got the challenge of holding off Max. He's got older rubber underneath him. Mountain of experience, as Neil said, at this circuit. And he's announced himself beautifully as the first wild card into this series. So they're racing virtually in Spain, driving a simulator in the case of the leader in New Zealand, up against another driver in Europe against a whole bunch of Australians. If you follow, let's have a look at the Bunnings Trade Power Pass power play and a great move, beautifully executed by Shane Van Gisberg and gets it done down the inside. The benefit of the fresher tyre worked and he's driving the car beautifully. You can see that he had an extra kilometre an hour to or two coming out of the final corner. He also got the benefit of the draft, and that's what it translated to at the end. See that line that I was talking about also with Verstappen just stepping the car wide on the approach with the left-hand side of it up on the outside of the road. So that was a great job. Now, what has McLaughlin got also? Oh, ouch, that looks spooky. I even got frightened. Thousands of kilometres away. <laughs> so there's Scotty McLaughlin behind him. That was a quick glimpse out the back of Max Verstappen's car. So on lap 10 now out of 11 with Shane Van Gisbergen leading over Verstappen, then McLaughlin. That's one, two, and three. Remember, $1,000 goes to the round winner tonight, which will then go to their designated charity, thanks to Armour All. At the moment, if Shane Van Gisbergen can hold on, he will get the round victory. His charity, Wings for Life, which is the same charity as Max Verstappen. So Anton came in with a five-point margin, but based on where he's in the field at the moment and where Shane is, it's going to swing in the other direction. So that was an example that I just wanted to highlight for McLaughlin before of the way in which it's hard to track the behaviour of the car. The way that it jumped out from underneath him and we held our breath for a moment is an example of how hard it is to feel what's going on beneath you because you don't have all the normal signals being telegraphed by the vehicle. Gary Jacobson on screen here at the moment. A nice job in the top ten. He's sitting in seventh for yellow cover in Matt Stone Racing. Originally from Shepparton in Victoria. Car number 30, pressure 344 is Jake Kostecki. And he's just in front of him in the NTI Matt Stone Racing car. So teammates there. And they're both following Will Davison at the moment, who got his wish. It's a relatively clean start. We chatted to him pre-race. McDonald's fastest lap so far. Also, Van Gisbergen's done a 42 and a half to be the quickest out there. Might dial up the Mac delivery, actually, Matty. It's about that time of day, isn't it? See if we can get him to race into the studio before the show's out. I think Nick, Nick's dog has uh, moved. <laughs> An island, possibly. No need for the heart rate monitor there. The Dunlop Super Dealer Commodore for Brad Jones Racing. So Nick in position number 12. Van Gisbergen's lead is 1.5 seconds as he heads out on the final lap now here in Barcelona. What a night out it's been for him. On the podium twice, including a race victory in the last race. And he's on track beautifully to win this round. He's an amazing talent. 2016 Virgin Australia Supercars champion tantalizingly close to a Bathurst 1000 victory several years ago. He's sitting on 393 supercar starts and he's a master at whatever he puts his hand to. And the expectation was that he would be driving at Le Mans 
in June. That event has been postponed. Now we're looking forward to seeing an opportunity for him to get a chance in the sports car at that famous race. But he's done some amazing things in GT racing as well over the years. He loves the notion of getting into anything. He'll do drifting, he'll do GT cars, he'll do supercars, he'll do sports cars. He drove a sports car at Tail and Bend earlier in the year in the Asian Le Mans series. He's had 36 Virgin Australia Supercar Championship wins, 30 poles, and in last year's championship season, he finished runner-up to Scott McLaughlin. He came into the round in 14th tonight after a difficult run at Phillip Island. He had a sixth, a seventh, and then there was big damage in that final race. But he's more than made up for it here tonight, both at Silverstone and in particular here in Spain. He's done a remarkable job in car number 97 for the Red Bull Holden Racing Team and Triple Eight Race Engineering. He steps it wide, he picks up the chequered flag, he grabs 75 points. He not only puts together a back-to-back -back victory, he is the round winner in Spain in the Holden Supercar. And his mate Max Verstappen jumps up and congratulates him on an outstanding drive. Van Gisbergen, Verstappen and McLaughlin, one, two and three in our seventh race of this championship season. Yeah, two Kiwis and a Dutchman on the podium here. Great performance from Shane. I was waiting for that. I was waiting for the warm down lap. And sure enough, Max Verstappen has turned it around. They're doing some circle work here at Barcelona. <laughs> and one of the Penrite races, I think, that was has come in and just given Max a little love tap as well. So everybody's burning the rubber at the end of round two of the BP Supercars All-Stars E-Series. And as Crompo said, Shane Van Gisbergen the round winner, courtesy of a third, a fourth, and two back-to-back -back victories. He's enjoying this one. $1,000 goes to his chosen charity, Wings for Life. The BP ultimate results, 1.9 seconds, is the victory margin between Van Gisberg and Verstappen. Scotty McLaughlin on the podium again. Cam Waters, a good night for him, a good bank of points. Gary Jacobson, a solid performance as well, and Zane Goddard inside the top 10. Will Brown in position 11. He's been... Impressive filling in for David Reynolds in the Penrite Racing Commodore. Chris Pither down there in 19th and Jamie Winkup in 20th. And then the back goes to Macaulay Jones. Chaz Mostert, who was caught up in some drama early on. Scotty, Pye, Hazelwood and Fullwood. The Koala race highlights from race seven of this series with Anton Di Pasquale starting on pole position yet again. Two poles this evening, two poles in round one. This is where the damage came. Scott McLaughlin found trouble and spun around. Anton Di Pasquale crunched right in the middle. LeBrock into the wall, then into Will Brown. Big, big damage. Andre Heimgartner here holds onto it somehow in the Ned Mustang. Pit lane was where it was originally lost the lead for Shane Van Gisbergen, but he didn't take long to get it back. Max Verstappen came zooming down the front straight. Watch this for a move when Van Gisbergen gets the job done beautifully. Uses the toe. It works here in Barcelona, and he played it nicely. Got the chequered flag. Had a bit of contact with his mate. So a good night out for Max Verstappen as well, with three second placings out of his first four races in the E-Series Supercars Championship. Jess, that was a night of good action. Certainly was. We've had a lot of fun, haven't we? <laughs> Having an international wildcard in the mix has certainly paid off, and we love the battles between he and Shane Van Gisbergen.